this all started back in 1983 or 84 when I started doing public seminars around this with handing people public planners, creating a list called next actions and a list called projects. So we just, you know, sort of the, the basic categories. Until then, pretty much all the actions you could take would be done, you know, in pretty much one or two environments max. That's right. So as soon as the mobile phone showed up, guess what was possible? You could make calls from almost anywhere. So I split my own next actions list into next actions calls and all the rest. Because now while I'm at with a phone, I can't do any of the other stuff, but I could make all these calls. And then I was doing a seminar and I had a, a great old friend and he had a sailboat. He said, wow, David, you know, there's a lot of stuff I need to do at my sailboat. So I created an at boat list, but I've had people show up. They organized it by emotional value of mm -hmm. the things done. Hmm. Fine, how cool. Yeah. One of the, the concepts that we often talk to leadership about is the, the four um, levels of competency you have, you know, or uh, you're at the beginning of anything new that you endeavor, uh, you're an unconscious incompetent. <laughs> and uh, hopefully you became a conscious incompetent, meaning you're at least aware that you're not good at this. <laughs> and then you become a, a conscious competent and eventually an unconscious competent. It's where it's so natural that it just becomes easy for you. And yeah. I found that... Um, Couldn't agree more, by the way. That's that's exactly how that works with people with my methodology. That's, yes. Uh, well, I, I'm, a, I'm a case study for you <laughs> on <laughs> that one. Mm -hmm. The biggest issue that most people have is their addiction to ambient anxiety. They're willing to be waked up at three o'clock in the morning about something they can't do anything about. Yes. How do you change that? My job has been to demonstrate what it's like to walk around and have nothing on your mind, mm -hmm. no matter how busy or whatever you're doing. And I can pretty much, you know, that's kind of how I live my life. And people go, wow, David, you look so relaxed. What's going on? Well, what's not keeping you relaxed? What do you need to do about that that you need to do to get that off your mind so that that's not spinning around you in some inappropriate way so you can trust You'll see that thing in front of the door you need to take to the office tomorrow, as opposed to trying to remember you need to take that thing. Why don't you build systems that remind you of stuff when you have to do them? So you can be kind of dumb and stupid like me most of the time because I've just already made my decisions. Then I have the freedom to be kind of dumb and stupid and have fun and then still do effective stuff. Now, as simple as that sounds, that's it. You know, obviously, <laughs> some pretty big challenges before, you know, back in my in my twenties. You know, a lot of experience I had with drugs that was not that was exploration. I wasn't escaping. I was exploring. I was back in the sixties. Was like, wow, what's out there? What's up there? What's whatever? Yeah. And so, but that didn't help a lot uh, in terms of my nervous system and my physiology or whatever. And then I ran. Then I got kind of ran off the rails. Oh, I did everything, you know, I've yeah. you know, I, I, I snorted heroin for a year and, you know, yeah. and, you know, there are hard, hardly any drugs that I didn't experiment with, but it didn't help my nervous system. It kind of fried it. I'm sure. So yeah. I haven't done any recreational stuff since 1971. So, uh, and you live in Amsterdam. You know, I mean, that's an amazing. <laughs> well, come on. The Dutch don't do that. The that's tourists right. that show up that do all that stuff. You know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> if you just implement the two minute rule anything yeah. in your email box right now that you could actually complete and get rid of in two minutes or less should not be there right you get that that's going to improve your life so yeah. all yeah. of this all of this stuff is improving i mean you really want a total lifestyle that you walk around with not much on your mind other than what you want to have on your mind. Yeah. I that I figured out how to do that. You just have to decide how much of that you think you need. Most people are okay. They, they feel stressed, but everybody around them is stressed and they've been stressed for 22 years. So they go, okay, what, so what? And there's a way to not have that. There's a place to get to where you can have nothing on your mind other than what you want on your mind. Knowing and having gone through this journey that you've gone through, how would uh, the David Allen today, what kind of advice would you provide that 20 or 21-year-old self? 
I would say you have an intuitive voice that's in there right now. It's always been there. It will always be there. Learn to quiet yourself and ask the right questions and listen to the intuitive voice that loves you, cares about you, doesn't judge you, but will give you really, really good advice. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn that for another 20 years in my life, probably at that point, or, or maybe 15 from the time I was 21 or 22 or whatever. And so I didn't know that, but that, I would say that and relax. If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to subscribe and to stay updated on everything that the Action Catalyst is up to. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Action Catalyst Podcast and on Twitter at Catalyst underscore action. And thanks for listening.